It's that time of the year again when I share with you my late 2024 Todoist setup. And this time there has been a few minor tweaks to give me a much more focused view. Okay, so what you're seeing here on my screen is my actual real Todoist. This is not my demo account. And what I want to do first up is just to go through my what my projects are. I don't use projects in the traditional sense. I just don't find them useful because really most people don't have as many projects as they think they do. Most people are just following a process and I'm no different. So I organize everything by when I'm going to do the task because that ultimately is the only thing that you can go by. It doesn't matter if you have a thousand things to do, you're always going to be constrained by the amount of time you have available each day. So all I want to know on a weekly basis when I'm doing my planning is when I'm actually going to do the task that I've got to do. So I have everything organized by this week, next week, this month, next month, long term and on hold, recurring areas of focus, and then I have my routines. And then at the bottom, I have a unique project, which I call planning, which if you can have a quick, I can't share that with you because there's a lot of personal and private details in there. But if you can see down here, what I've done essentially is I have my project planner, which is a board and it's separated by quarters. I have done a few videos on this before. I've got my goals and objectives for 2025 and my purpose and outcomes, which never really changes because that's my life mission, if you like. Uh, a lot of videos I've done on those in the past, and so I'm not going to waste your time here. And for those of you curious about this, this week, next week, this month, next month, etc., that's part of what I call the time sector system. Basically, it doesn't matter how many tasks you've got, the only thing that matters is do you have the time to do them? And this helps me to focus in on what is truly important each week or each month or whatever. So what I've done, the tweaks that I've done this year is... Uh, what you'll notice here first up is that I've got down here everything organized by label. Now if I just go into my filters and labels here for a moment, you can see down here that I have eight labels and my labels are related to the work that I do which is in red, which is clients, writing, projects, audiovisual. This, doing this video, is an audiovisual task. And then I've got my communications which we all have, I've got my planning, admin and chores. That's really all I need. It's a general catch-all for certain things. Over the last 12 months, maybe even two years actually, I've not actually needed to expand that in any way because this covers pretty much everything I've got to do, whether it's personal or professional. And I know that everyone's always curious about what my filters are, so I have my today's objectives, which I'll cover in a moment, and down here. Now these ones here I very rarely use but sometimes like here a task that is over 365 days uh, that's something that I do find useful every six months or so where I can just see is there anything that's just been sitting around. Now I do have a unique filter because I don't need to see my routines they're just been there some of them have been there for five or six years so I don't actually need to see those when I do this. So the query for this, if you want to take a note of this, is created before, which tells me with the amount of days, and then minus 365 days, which means the last year, and not project routine. So the whole thing is query before, colon, dash, sorry, minus 365 days, and not, that's an exclamation mark, P colon routines. And that one there is just, it really does help me to filter out the stuff that's got lost in the system. Okay, that's enough of my filters. I've covered that multiple times. So when we go to my today view, the way I've organized this is just a general list of stuff that I've got to do. And the way that this is organized is by, it's grouped by label. Now in the past, I've grouped by priority and I've used things like must do, morning and afternoon. That does work and I do still tend to use that a little bit but now I'm using more time blocks in my calendar and my time blocks would be like writing, audio visual which is what I'm doing now, communication time which is usually about 4 or 5 p.m. and then admin I do after dinner. 
the chores down here is to wash my car. I always give my cars a name. So wash Robbie, that's something I need to do later this afternoon. So these things are my tasks for today. Now the, the big change that I've made this year is to go, is in my, let's go to my favorites here. Uh, my today's objectives, that hasn't changed. It's always the same. It's the two most important tasks of the day. Today's objectives is simply, uh, let me just go back to my filters and labels and you can see today's objectives, because the, the, I'm always asked this question, get ready to write this down, is my today and P1. So basically anything flagged with a red flag must be done today. It's non-negotiable, must be done today. And I would say that I have round about a 90% success rate on that. And I always start the day after I've finished writing my journal, looking at this and mentally sort of preparing myself in terms of when I'm going to do it. So I knew this morning at about 11 o'clock I would start recording my videos. I also knew that I would edit and post this week's blog post later this afternoon, probably this evening, because I don't have any calls today. So that's all been taken care of. That is my focus point for the day. I then switch to my today's focus, and I'm just going to remove the menu here. Now, this is something that I covered in a recent video, but what it is, is essentially my something I've learned from the Franklin Planner, which is a P1 is a must-do task. It must be done. P2 is what I would describe as a should do task. So there's obviously going to be more tasks in should do. I always limit this to two. Uh, my priority two though can have up to eight tasks in it because I still operate, for those asking recently, yes, I still operate what I call the two plus eight prioritization system. And so two tasks that must be done and then eight others that I should do. This is where this goes, these go. Now today, because I've got washing Robbie, which is an afternoon task, and it's also what I call a context-based task, I can't wash Robbie here while I'm in the office. I have to go to the car wash center. So it's a location-based task task. So it's in priority three. Things like going to the supermarket or going to the hardware store or going to pick up some medicine for my wife or whatever, all that is going to be P3 because it's location-based or people-based or sometimes tool-based. So this is how I'm basically running my day. I'm using a board in Todoist and it gives me a really clear focused view on what I need to get done today. So let's bring back the menu. Now, just for those of you who are curious, no, I am not using the calendar view. I don't find that helpful. I much prefer to have my calendar open on my, cal uh, on my computer. I usually have a widget down in the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, which is something that Apple allows me to do, which shows my appointments for the day. So it gives me an indication of what I should be doing. So I don't need to use the calendar view in Todoist. It's just another layer of complexity that I don't actually need to use in Todoist. It doesn't mean to say that you don't need it, but I find that having this view Todoist is there, it's just a task manager. It's not a calendar, it's a task manager. It just tells me what tasks I need to perform in my writing blocks that I have right here. And that's what really works for me. And so that's essentially the big changes that I've done this year. So when my day starts, I have my workflow. I call this favorites area my workflow. So when I start the morning off, I start in this area, today's objectives. This is where I know that I will have my must do tasks for the day. I then slip down into my today's focus and this is really where I spend most of my day. This is the window that's open on my computer when I'm working and getting my work done. So this is always telling me that these are the things that you need to get done today. Now, at the end of the day, round about, usually I do this after dinner, probably about 8 p.m., I go into what I call my tomorrow's focus. Now, you'll see here that at the moment it's got 12. This is simply because it's showing me the tasks that I've got to do today and the tasks that I've got to do tomorrow. Now, the thing about this is this is just essentially there to help. Most of these today tasks will have gone by the time. And all I'm doing is I'm making sure that this is actually doable, that I have a realistic day for tomorrow. So I still have this as a list. I could change that into a board. Uh, and what I would do if I was going to change it into a board is I would set it by priority. So when I'm doing my planning tonight, for example, now this is going to be a little bit weird because I've actually only got two. These will be done by tomorrow. 
Uh, I need to write tomorrow the, the podcast script tomorrow, which is a must do. That's a recurring must do. And I've got all these ones down here, which all being well will be done. But I will also have others that I will reprioritize for tomorrow. But this is my, my way of being able to make sure that when I finish the day, this number is less than 10. This does not include my unflagged tasks. Those are the ones that, well, if I have time to do, I will do them. So if you look down here, there's one here, which is post blog to personal website. That's a, a, if I've got chance, I'll do that today. I think I've only got one of those today, which is actually quite good. Most of my routines, by the way, will probably have no flag because they're not that important. So they're all in there. But that's it. That's essentially how I do my, my, weekly pro, my daily processing. The other thing I should point out is I always process my inbox at the end of the day. Now, the beauty of the time sector system is, is if it doesn't need to be done this week, I can just drag and drop it into next week. And as you'll see here, um, I can see if there's anything in here that needs to be brought forward. Now, the thing is, I don't always bring these forward every week and it's not automated. I not in, This is about weekly planning. I don't want to automate this. This is me making decisions at the end of every day or when I'm doing my weekly planning as to what needs to be done the following week. I don't want to be automating this and you don't want to be automating this. This requires a human touch. This is you and it's you deciding what you need to get done next week. Do not, and I repeat this, do not automate this or try and create complex filters and labels to automate it. It doesn't work. That's how you'll build up backlogs because you won't complete everything each day. So this, when I'm doing the weekly planning, is when I go into like this month and then I go into next month. A lot of all these things here, like get, get my old glasses made into sunglasses. This is an interesting one because it's been there now for 18 months. I do need to do it, but now in we're into the winter, I don't feel any pressure. I'll probably consider it next spring. But I still want to do it at some point. So I've got it into next month. Probably not going to be doing it in January, but hey, who knows? Maybe I will. But the beauty of my weekly planning is I can come across something like this and say, right, I'm sick of seeing this. This is going into this week. I'm going to go to the optician and I'm going to get my old, old glasses made into sunglasses. So these are the things that I have already in here and it's just brilliant because it gives me a wonderfully focused view each day. It's never overwhelming. I can only do what's in here because like my writing time today was between 9.30 and 11.30. So I had two hours to do my writing. I didn't edit and post this week's blog post, which is perfectly fine because I got the three other writing projects done or tasks done in that time. And that's what I love about this system. It really keeps me focused on what needs to be done each day. I can throw stuff into the inbox, which so far today I haven't had anything to do because I'm in lockdown, because um, I always am on a Wednesday when I record these videos. And it just works beautifully. Simple, nothing complex, but it does exactly what I want it to do. And that's really what you want to be doing. Don't overcomplicate things, don't overthink things, and certainly try to avoid automating anything because it doesn't actually save you time. You need that human touch very, very frequently, actually, daily and weekly, where you're deciding what needs to happen this week, what needs to happen today. Now, I hope you found this useful. It's something I do every year and I have been doing it for many, many years. I'll put a list in the show notes below all the videos that I've done over the last two or three years so you can see how my system has evolved. And maybe if you want to learn a little bit more, you can always subscribe to my newsletter because I always do that every week. Every week I will update you, give you some tips and tricks to get the most out of not just Todoist, but any productivity system. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see what I, my system was like earlier this year, then this video up here is the one to watch next.